Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 18 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera, faculty at Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. Students, we have been discussing various managerial functions in past sessions on Principles of Management course. Today we shall be discussing two important concepts which the manager has to face as a challenge and has to implement as a practice in the organization and these two concepts are conflict and coordination in management. We shall begin first with the concept of conflict. What according to you is conflict and I think you all understand this term well that conflict is inevitable especially when human beings are interacting with each other. They may have opposing point of views, different value systems or belief systems which make it difficult to adjust and adapt to each other thought process. These opposing views then create some amount of turbulence and frustration amongst the members which eventually leads on to concepts like conflicts. In organization also the same phenomenon ha happens, the conflict can be within or outside the organization within the organization is when it is between the individual members or group members of the organization outside the organization can be when it has conflicting views with the competitive world that is catering to or giving a threat to the organization in uh, organization in practice now having said about this regarding conflict it, it can be an example can be that in organization board of directors they want to take a risk and launch a new set of products in the market and another set of board of directors may be of opinion that it can, this can be a dangerous and threatful situation for organization both in terms of financial health and brand image. So such opposing views do occur and the organizational members may be top management, middle management, lower or managers, any practicing manager in organization has to face. Not only any kind of official conflict but interpersonal conflicts, relational conflicts also occur in organizations which are between the individuals who may be serving in the same team or may be in the same department. So let us now try to understand the concepts of conflict and coordination, how it changes the face of the organization or how with the help of the other concept that is coordination we can bring in some harmony. So conflict is the process that begins when one party perceives that another party has negatively affected or is about to negatively affect something that is first party cares about. So this is an important phenomena where the emotions are into consideration that one party is caring about certain phenomenon and the other party is not worried about that at all. Then this difference in opinion may lead to the conflicting situation. This conflict tr thought has been transitioned over the time by various researchers or based on different thinkers point of view. So first is the traditional view of conflict. In the traditional view of conflict, it was seen as a dysfunctional outcome resulting from poor communication, lack of openness amongst the members who are talking to each other and lack of trust between them and the failure of manager to be responsive towards their employees. The dysfunctional outcome here means that it is not normal. So the outcome is not, when the outcome is not normal, we call it as a dysfunctional outcome. And this conflict is a dysfunctional outcome, which may be because of these reasons. 
so a manager has to be quite alert with respect to traditional view that how or what can be the reasons because of which the conflict is occurring the second view on conflict manage a conflict concept is that conflict is a natural occurrence phenomenon in all groups and organizations and human relation view dominated this conflict theory from 1940s through 1970s that conflict is inevitable it is going to happen it will occur because of conflicting point of views and thought processes of different individuals the third view is called as the interactionist view interactionist view encourages conflict on the grounds that a harmonious peaceful tranquil and cooperative group will lead to downfall why will this lead to downfall because it will become prone to static and non responsive needs for change and innovation because if everything is in harmony that may lead to monotony and also there will be no culture of creativity so when there is no culture of creativity we will have less of change and innovation and thus the interactionist views believes in that some amount of conflict is definitely required though interactionist view says that not on all conflicts are good but they have an opinion that functional conflicts are which are appropriate to have some constructive decisions in organization and they are the constructive forms of conflict support which go, supports the goals of group and improves its performance conflicts on the other hand which are opposite to functional are the dysfunctional as we have just now discussed dysfunctional conflicts and these hinder the group performance and they are destructive forms of the conflict so the interactionist view says that we need to go for a constructive form of the conflict which is the functional conflict which is much required to have some kind of go getting behavior in the organization further conflicts can also be of three different categories that is apart from being functional and dysfunctional conflicts the conflicts can be manifested in the form of task conflict now what do we say when do we say that there is a task conflict when it relates to the content and goal of the work that is to be done so if people have conflicting point of views with respect to the job to be done or job to be achieved we call it as a task conflict and task conflict is categorized as low to moderate level of functional conflict so if we have task conflict which has lower magnitude then that much amount of task conflict can serve as a functional conflict and which is much solicited the second kind of conflict is the relationship conflict it focuses on interpersonal relationships and these conflicts are almost always dysfunctional because here the felt concept comes feelings of individual are at stake or are uh, uh, feelings of individuals get disturbed and because of which it is a dysfunctional conflict so here opposing point of views and non caring behavior can be the reasons for relationship conflict then comes third conflict as process conflict under process conflict it relates to how the work gets done so the process step by step process of completing this task so it relates to the task conflict also if we have low level of process conflict in organization then it is a good conflict and it is functional in nature and could enhance team performance also because here someone can play as the devil's advocate and can uh, help the process have better functioning after that we have discussed about what is conflict and what are different types of conflict different types of conflicts which we have discussed just now are functional conflict dysfunctional conflict and further there can be three categories task conflict relation con conflict and process conflict now let's move on to what is the process of conflict all together how conflict occurs what all situations come in between or stages arise 
So the first stage is potential opposition or incompatibility. If you are friends and you are talking to each other and you are at same page, you understand with the same perspective, the same conditions or situations in life, probably you are compatible with each other. But there can be chances that there is some opposition going on in thought process which leads to some incompatibility. So what are the reasons why people have incompatibility with each other or there is some potential opposition? The answer lies with these concepts. So the first is communication. Communication as a source of conflict can represent the opposing forces which arise from some kind of semantic barriers. Now what are semantic barriers? Some unclarified assumptions are there, some noises, some disturbances in the communication processes taking place. So thus communication becomes a source for conflict. Like if I give you an example of an organization, in organizations in uh, during the uh, advertisement phase you must have seen that the individuals, uh, the managers they put a banner and that banner is all about where it says that 50% off, 60% off and in the end on right hand side a very small letter is written and where it says up to. So that point up to is the unclarified assumption and it behaves as a semantic barrier in communication. You walk into the uh, shop after seeing that banner that there is 50% off or 70% off but you have not seen that smaller font of up to there which did not complete the communication. So that this may become a source of conflict. You may also you know you may go into the shop and you tell him that you disturbed my uh, schedule. I just looked into the uh, advertisement and walked into your shop which which took a lot of time and I wasted time, I did not even get to know that it was up to 50%, not exactly flat 50%. So this is how communication gets distorted and this becomes a source for conflict. Then how structure can become a source for conflict? So the size and specialization, it acts as forces to stimulate the conflict. How? The larger, uh, you know, the larger the group or more specialized it activity, its activities are, the greater the likelihood of conflict because if the organization is small, there are less number of people, chances of having opposing views is lesser because of less headcount. But contradictorily, if the organization is large, it will stimulate conflict because large number of people will be into opposing views and similarly, it goes with the specialized level. Then comes personal variables. What all personal variables students we are talking about? We are talking about like individual value system, individual personality characteristics. They may lead to potential conflict. Now someone can be very systematic and orderly and the other one can be chaos, chaotic. So that is a potential conflict source in the personality differences. And most important is the value system, value differences are best explanation for differences of opinion in various matters. So people have varied value system, thus they have potential opposition and incompatibility with each other. The next stage of conflict process is cognition and personalization. What is cognition? Cognition is our thinking ability. So conflict is personalized when it is felt. So felt here means that the emotions are playing their role and when individuals become emotionally involved and emotions play a major role in shaping up our perceptions. We all understand that perception is saved, uh, is made on the basis of external stimuli that we are exposed to and in exposure to that stimuli we give some kind of response and this response is nothing but the action we do and action is our behavior. So all these things are interrelated to the personalized or felt concept of conflict that when we perceive in a manner where we feel that there is incongruence with the other individual and our thought process is getting affected, our emotions are getting affected. thus the stage 2 of conflict has been reached and we are now taking it personally. 
the third stage of conflict process is intentions so under intentions what is intentions these are you know students what is intentions these are the decisions to act in a given way you decide to take part in marathon so that is the action you have decided and the decision you have taken to act in that way so that is your intention for a forthcoming marathon race so intention plays a major role when it comes to having a conflict whether you intend to have cooperativeness or whether you intend to have assertiveness the degree to which one party attempts to satisfy the other party's concern is the cooperativeness so if cooperativeness is high that is this degree is high the intention is to more of collaborate and less of having any conflict while if assertiveness is high that is the degree to which one party attempts to satisfy his or her concerns here we are worried about others concerns so intention here is about only self when the self intention is there conflicts are bound to occur here we are insensitive about the needs and requirements of the other individuals so this was the stage 3 for the conflict process now within this we have five conflict handling intentions students just now we tried to answer that stage 3 is that after we realize that the conflict is getting personal to us our emotions are getting affected we think of going ahead with shall we go with cooperativeness or assertiveness now intentions can be five more kinds let us try to understand these intentions in detail with the help of this graphic we can understand how intentions play a role in conflict management here you can see that cooperativeness that is one of the intentions in conflict and assertiveness which is the other intention in the conflict management these cooperativeness and assertiveness can have a degree which we discussed in the previous slide so it ranges from low to high while assertiveness ranges from low to high as well there is a scenario when both assertiveness and cooperativeness are quite low now under this category we have this point which is more of avoiding in nature so what is avoiding when maybe you know a person recognize that a conflict exists he understands it very well but he wants to withdraw from it and he wants to suppress it he doesn't want to give it any importance that this conflict is available or this conflict is existing then comes the other intention for conflict management is competing under competing one person is seeks to satisfy his or her own interest he is more worried about his concerns regardless of what impact that action of his is going to have on, have on the other party so he is not worried about the impact on other party he is only more competitive and wants to fulfill his own self interests one the the third conflict management or conflict handling behavior can be collaborating collaborating is where the when the parties to the conflict each desire to fully satisfy the concerns of all party so what does this mean this means that here the intention is to solve the problem by clarifying and discussing differences rather than by accommodating so discuss clarify resolve it probably the conflict can be we may go for a functional conflict in this case rather than dysfunctional conflict then comes accommodating under accommodating one person surrenders completely and he is in the mode of self sacrificing for the sake of the other person so this is called as accommodating here one party seeks to appease the opponent so as to resolve the conflict and the last conflict handling 
concept is compromising. What happens in compromising? When each party to conflict seeks to give up. This giving up intention is what is compromising which results in a sharing kind of system. So, there is no clear winner or loser and the solution provides incomplete satisfaction to both the parties under the conflicting. So, when we have conflict handling, we may think of as individuals, tomorrow you also as manager may think of either you avoid the conflict or you have a competing spirit with the conflict. You may collaborate with your opposing team members and resolve it. You may accommodate on the basis of maybe if it is the need of the hour and you have to appease the other person to get the work done or you may compromise by giving up something wherein sharing occurs and as a result the conflict is handled well. So students I believe by now you have understood that how we can handle the conflict. Now after the stage 3 which was all about the intentions, now we move on to stage 4 which is about the behavior part of it. Behavior is the action that we have to do. So here the conflict becomes visible. Okay? Conflict becomes visible means that if you have some opposing view with the other person and you do not feel that that person is, you are in good terms with him and you believe that you are in a conflict in term with him, you may not you know give him correct information at right time. Maybe you have to inform him about a meeting time schedule and you do not inform him at all. So, here what you have done, you have behaved in a particular manner and that behavior is visible to others also where you have hidden the information of this meeting that is occurring from him. So, it is a dynamic process of interaction and here people manifest in their behavior what they feel from inside. Now, because of this behavior we move on to the stage 5 of conflict that is outcomes that behavior will lead to certain outcomes and these outcomes can be either functional or dysfunctional. When these outcomes are functional they improve the group performance. Here the constructive criticism take place and this constructive criticism, le criticism leads to improvement in the performance of individual or the group. While the dysfunctional outcome will hinder the growth performance not only of individual group but organization at large. So, let us uh, try to understand this functional and dysfunctional concept with the help of this graphic where again the level of conflict is from low to high and productivity and innovation in the organization is from low to high. Let us see in what scenario the productivity and innovation is at higher level. So, it says that one quadrant which is at the initial stage when level of conflict and the productivity is low is dysfunctional conflict and towards the end when it is high the level of conflict is high again and innovation is low it is again a dysfunctional conflict. So, what is it during this dysfunctional conflict the behaviors can be overly compliant, blind acceptance and non assertive. So, here too little conflict is there with too little conflict there is no growth at all. Why? Because we are non-assertive, we are accepting what the manager is saying, we are not using our brain, we are not using the cognitive ability to come up with the appropriate solutions etc. While the other category when the level of conflict is high, again the outcome here is no growth of the organization, hindrance is there. But this dysfunctional conflict is because of too much of conflicting behavior amongst others. And what are the behaviors which are manifested here? Disregard for others, aggression, yelling or maybe continual rule breaking. These all are manifested by the members who feel that they have difference in opinion in or in difference in value system with others. What is the ideal kind of condition when the conflict becomes functional? Here the behaviors pertaining to conflict are quite appropriate and what are the behaviors? Assertive cooperation amongst individuals, then sharing opinions with each other to collaborate and resolve and third exploring opportunities how they can have a better scenario creation and avoidance of conflict is focused upon. 
So students here we have tried to answer question on what are the stages in which scenarios in or what are the behaviors which manifest the functional and dysfunctional conflicts in organizations. After discussing it let us have quick discussion on the functional outcomes of the conflicting process that is when the conflict is very constructive and it leads to gain for the organization or individuals. So, conflict is constructive when it improves the quality of decision because multiple people have opposed the view and as a result an effective quality decision has been finally decided on. It stimulates creativity and innovation then also we say that the conflict is quite constructive it is leading to some improved processes. It encourages interest and curiosity in the individual that I am doing something wrong and other people are or my managers are telling me this is the right path and I must follow and look into dig into this path and find out to what extent my manager is correctly giving me the right guidance. It is the antidote for group think. Now students we have also uh, uh, discussed about group think in one of the sessions on principles of management where we highlighted that when a decision making is taking place in any group, the group influences the individual to, to get in parity with what the group is thinking. Here the group will have a pressure or force on the individual member to align with what the group is thinking. So, in order to avoid that situation we have this functional conflict which is, which is the antidote to that group think kind of behavior. Also this functional conflict occurs when increasing cultural diversity of workplace takes place. So, how when there is cultural diversity of workplace people from various varied region, region, uh, region, caste, creed, background, value system, ethical system they come together and they have different experiences of their life, they have different knowledge and learning patterns, they have grown up in different environments. So, they come up with probably best of insights from their own cultural background and collecting that information and extracting the best practice out of it is the outcome of functional conflict. So, this is how fun functional conflict can be an advantage for the organization. On the contrary, the dysfunctional conflict is the outcomes which are manifested in dysfunctional conflict include that reduction in group cohesiveness. So, whenever there is degree of what is group cohesiveness? Degree of attachment between individuals in a group. So, when this degree decreases it leads to dysfunctional outcome or destructive conflict which when this degree decreases individual may think of doing some harm to each other which is dysfunctional which is not normal and subordination of group goals to primacy of infighting between the members. So, here people are or the members are not thinking about why they have joined together, why they have joined their hands together rather they are more focused on the different reasons because of which the fight is taking place. So, if the manager accept the interactionist view the one which we discussed earlier interactionist view which says that optimum amount of conflict is required or optimum amount of conflict is healthy they encourage functional conflict and thus improvement is seen. So, now that we have seen the conflict in the organization and conflict handling behaviors also in organization. Let us try to see that what can be an effective fundamental to resolve these conflicts or what can be an effective management practice which can help have effective management in organization. Students this practice is called as coordination. Coordination is also called as a sense of management. We have discussed the functions of management like planning and organizing etcetera unless otherwise there is 
good amount of coordination and cooperation amongst the members in organization even best of plans can fail and high amount of organizational structures or right kind of organization structures also may have malfunctioning so let us see that what is the concept of coordination here the definition of coordination is the orderly arrangement of group effort to provide unity of action in pursuit of common purposes so that means we need to have an order in arrangement of the efforts that we are doing coordination is the effort to ensure a smooth interplay of functions and forces of different parts of organization to the end that it purp its purpose will real will be realized with minimum of friction and maximum of collaborative effectiveness so coordination focuses on having less friction and high collaboration with each other coordination is the process of developing the required patterns of group effort and securing unity of action this is important students coordination takes us to unity of action which was also uh, one of the principles of management coordination refers to quality of collaboration across the departments and we may say that shared knowledge shared goals and mutual respect are three important characteristics of coordination for any department organization and institution let's understand the importance of concept of coordination so it says that first coordination is a continuous activity of the organization it needs to be conducted on a regular basis for every phenomenon second is that it aims at achieving unity in action in the organization producing synergy effect if unity of in action takes place it produces synergy third it aims at achieving the required patterns of group and individual performances so this is also one of the importances of coordination coordination ensures stability and growth of an organization how by helping the manager to connect different connect with different departments and sections in a manner and together weld them as an one entity next is coordination is necessary to ensure smooth interplay of different functions in organization both within the organization and outside the organization it also facilitates the efficient management of resources and time if we coordinate well we can have less wastage of appropriate resources and time it also helps managers to improve the human relations by having the concept of reconciliation amongst the members and having a parity between individual and organizational goals then further it promotes commitment and loyalty amongst the employees so you can see that there are so many benefits of having coordinated effort in the organization and in the same line let us have an example from the industry so this example is about the microsoft initiative of innovation through realignment now what is the realignment the company has done microsoft they act microsoft they believe that effective coordination can enhance productivity link macro and macro level organizational dynamics and improve the trust amongst organizational groups so you can see students one of the renowned companies across the globe is also following this fundamental of coordination and achieving greater success in this regard organization may involve their own goals and strategies for coordinated initi initiative microsoft's realignment and coordination initiatives are here to be discussed they have recently announced their realignment strategy that aims aims at enhancing speed efficiency and capability why this speed efficiency and capability so that they can innovate and improve their performance and through its realignment and coordination 
इनिशिएटिव कंपनी एक्सपेक्ट्स टू अचीव बेटर एग्जीक्यूशन फ्रॉम प्रोडक्ट कॉन्सेप्चुअलाइजेशन एंड इनोवेशन राइट थ्रू मार्केटिंग एंड सेल्स सो दी परफॉर्मेंस एनहेंसमेंट इनिशिएटिव ऑफ द कंपनी हैज थ्री डायमेंशन फर्स्ट फोकसिंग द होल कंपनी ऑन अ सिंगल स्ट्रैटेजी then enhancing the capability in all disciplines engineering technology areas etc and working together with more collaboration and agility around its common goals so this working together with more collaboration is the coordination effort that microsoft is doing microsoft also believes that its single strategy as one company will drive to set shared goals for all activities so by this students we have tried to understand that how organizations are taking benefit of collaborative efforts let's now have some information on various principles of coordination what are principles students principles are the governing guidelines or norms basis of which the phenomena takes place so here mary parker follett has suggested four principles of coordination and these principles of coordination include first principle of direct contact principle of early stages coordination principle of reciprocal relations and principle of continuity let us try to answer and understand these principles individually so the first is principle of direct contact what happens in this each manager maintains direct and personal contact with his or her subordinate so here chain of hierarchy may be existing but still the manager tries to have a personal connect with the subordinates it is often viewed as the best way of conveying ideas and information effectively to your subordinate rather than having a third party may intermediate because with third party the information may get diluted or incomplete information may be given and the essence of that work is not transmitted so direct contact is always the best way to convey the ideas it also ensures that there are no misunderstandings and tensions in relations between the managers and subordinates with this what we can do we can avoid potential yes students what we can avoid we can avoid potential conflicts because with one to one managers and subordinates are at same page it can also avoid any possible conflicts and dispute so this we have already mentioned here and direct contact can establish with the help of face to face meetings through conferences committees etc so these are the modes by which the manager can have direct contact with the subordinates and hence they can have effective coordination next principle of coordination is that we must have early stage coordination which gives an edge so management should begin the process of coordination even at the early stages of enterprise formation so in we call something as organizational life cycle so at the early stages of this is generally the bell curve of organization life cycle so early stages of beginning of the organization formation the coordination effort should start and manager need to have a long range vision for that so the rationale behind this principle of coordination is that coordination can be achieved easily and effectively if it is undertaken at early stages of conceptualization of the organization of planning po planning procedure and pol policy formation and also understandably managers need to have a long range vision while understanding the coordination function the third principle of coordination is reciprocal relationship now what is reciprocal relationship and how does it take place reciprocal relationship is based on the premise that individuals and departments are interrelated in nature they cannot work in isolation they need each other for carrying out activities now since they need each other for carrying out activities managers must first ascertain the likely effect of their decision on other people and the departments within the organization 
so this is essential because the interrelated nature of people in the department how other people are going to get affected by the decisions that the manager is taking so for example the decision or the action of one person in any one department may impact the decision or action of others in same department or in other departments so in therefore managers must give due importance to the interrelationship while devising the coordination strategy so this is called as reciprocal relationship thinking of that if i take one action how that action is going to affect the other members in my team and other members in my department or other members in my organization because they may get affected because if they get affected as a result the the organization functioning get distorted for example if the marketing manager wants to go for advertising of a particular product and financial manager doesn't have that much of fund so the decision of marketing manager will have some impact on the financial manager's decisions so reciprocal relation says that before you go ahead with decision making you should think on how that decision is going to affect the other department then comes principle of continuity principle of continuity here means that the coordination is a continuous activity it is not a one time activity so it must perpetuate itself it it must be capable of perpetuate perpetuating itself that is continuing itself and sustaining itself well so managers should continuously coordinate the various activities of organizations irrespective of the changes in plans policies activities and situations which take place because of external or internal changes in the environment of the organization now students we shall be discussing on types of coordination what all types of coordination exist so broadly this has been categorized into three types of coordination in the organization the first category is based on the george terry's view on coordination where he where the coordination is focused on dynamic as a dynamic activity and is classified into four types coordination within an individual this is what you do for yourself your exams are coming you coordinate your different activities you have to go and organize an organ a festival in the uh, university festival in your school and college you coordinate within yourself first that what are the events to take place and how you are going to manage them coordination amongst the individuals in a group that is intra group coordination within the group tasks are assigned duties are assigned and people coordinate with the res resources and time coordination among group of an enterprises so this is within the within the organization but between different departments and divisions of the organization and coordination with those of other enterprises and forces like government regulatory measures economic conditions etc so outside the organization when coordination takes place this is the fourth category so this is type 1 how we can think of that coordination can take place at different levels in the organization the second category of coordination is based on the number of people involved and the nature of activities undertaken so number of people are involved can be small or large and similarly the nature of activity which is taken can be less risky or maybe high risk involved due to certain factors so this kind of coordination is divided into two categories internal coordination and external coordination when it comes to internal coordination this is the coordination amongst different individuals groups units and departments of one organization so this is what we call as within the organization within organization coordination it also refers to the integration of financial resources material resources and human resources these are the three major ingredients for any organization to survive so these three are coordinated well in the internal coordination while in external coordination coordination between an organization and its external environment is called as external coordination it is typically coordination with suppliers these are the external agencies customers trade unions competitors shareholders banks 
government agencies etc so they are all who interact with organization from outside so that is why it is also called as outside coordination so effective internal and external coordination is an essential prerequisite for smooth and successful functioning of the organization so by now i believe students you are clear about that on what levels the organization coordinates with each other further third type of coordination is it depends on the level of management and is classified as either vertical coordination horizontal coordination or a diagonal coordination let's see based on the level of management so first is the vertical coordination coordination of activities which are carried out at different levels of the management we have studied the line organization just now in the previous session so this is the vertical level and coordination amongst these level is vertical coordination it is it is achieved among people in superior subordinate relationship so this is the superior subordinate relationship and coordination between top and middle level of management are examples of vertical coordination example here can be when the department head that is sales manager coordinates the activities of subordinate that is sales team working under him we call it as a vertical coordination the second in line a third type of coordination is horizontal coordination horizontal coordination is which is across the line so this is uh, when we have different functional areas coordinating with each other we call it as a horizontal coordination coordination across the functional departments such as marketing finance purchase etc so among peers working in the same department also is the horizontal coordination so you have say hr department within hr department you have multiple people working coordination amongst these people is also horizontal coordination managers achieve horizontal co coordination through direct contact between departments information system task forces teams and full time integrators who are the uh, integrators also the uh, advisors to the organization with the help of these systems and agencies horizontal coordination is achieved then comes the third category which is diagonal coordination so diagonal coordination means activities are performed at different levels and different departments of the organization so in large organization what happens because of the size of the organization the top management has no direct access or proximity to working arrangements so in this case diagonal coordination can be effective important is when different departments depend on a particular department to accomplish a specific goal so example here in diagonal coordination can be a software engineer is discussing or coordinating with the marketing management ma marketing management manager for launching of a new product so that is a diagonal coordination because software engineer is at a different chain of command in different department at different level rank is also different and marketing manager is in different chain of command and his rank is also different so that is how it is called as a diagonal coordination next is techniques of coordination how we can achieve coordination with the help of some tools and techniques so students when we discuss techniques of coordination few of these techniques we are already aware of so let us quickly see them in detail namely the techniques are authority objectives policies committees conferences coordinators communication collective bargaining performance reviews and management it tools quality control tools and voluntary coordination let's discuss these different techniques now these techniques basically enable the organization manager to have better coordination how what is authority if you can quickly recapitulate it was the power which was vested in the position so if manager knows the authority well or delegates the authority well there is greater chances that coordination can occur effectively 
so people comply with orders and instructions issued by their supervisors and authority facilitates coordinated behavior amongst organizational members towards achievement of the goals the interpersonal relations are mostly structured and organizational activities are coordinated in terms of prescribed authority of the manager so these are the benefits of having authority as a technique or tool for the coordination because it enhances structured and coordinated behavior the next tool is objectives if we have clearly defined objectives this can be an effective tool for coordination because then there will be no ambiguity on what is the goal to be achieved so as we say that objectives are capable of providing direction to the whole organization and this direction enables the management to achieve unity of action for their work then if in the organization we have policies procedures rules and regulations which are highly standardized then these standardized policy procedure rules and regulation can lead to standardized behavior of members also and this what this is what is required as part of coordination that we must have standardized behavior of individuals so policies help to ensure that members behavior in workplace it conforms to the organizational rules and laws it makes the members behavior meet the expectation of management also so having policies procedures rules and regulation helps the manager to gain better coordination further policies they apply to particular situation in form of a procedure you may have a leave policy transfer policy in organization so that policy is the guideline and how that guideline has to be executed is a procedure a well defined step by step procedure which which gives a list of activities needed to carry out predetermined tasks policies and procedures they aim at ensuring that all activities of organization are performed in efficient manner we can also coordinate with the help of committees in organization we studied the committee organization in today's session where we found out that if in if there are committees formed by cross functional groups they can help resolve the problems more innovatively because varied diversity of people in the who have joined this committee have different range of experiences that can facilitate coordination also so committees are generally made up of members representing different departments and managers can achieve coordination amongst employees working under them by forming committees or work groups and committees are made up of small number of members with frequent interactions which help them to have better coordination the next tool that helps enhance coordination is the conference so what is a conference where people come up and discuss some common issue or there is an agenda which probably is at a global level and being experienced at a global level and with the help of conference varied researchers intellectuals and practicing managers can gather together and share their thoughts on resolving broader issues so conferences they involve wider membership and they become effective forums for manager to discuss various common issues and reach understanding on important organizational issues and thus helps in better coordination of activities and cooperation amongst the members of that conference then we have coordinators who are coordinators they are basically the liaisoning members or we also call them as integrators liaisoning members means linking members who connect two different departments parties or individuals together so coordinators they normally work in one department and coordinate the activities of one or more department like students in your school or in your college you must have experienced that there were coordinators for eco club or there were coordinators for sports club or maybe there were faculty coordinators for different uh, administrative works like coordinating the batch or maybe coordinating the board of studies meeting etc so they are from one department and they coordinate one or more departments so the primary role of coordinator is to represent their units departments and divisions in meetings and conferences and they are basically the face of their department 
they carry all the necessary information with them which they can later on produce in the meeting to have a better coordinated effort between the departments they participate in the discussions and pass on the information gathered from the meetings within the members of department to the from the outside to the departmental members next technique is communication communication is effective and useful instrument for coordinating the activities of organizational members and achieving common understanding on matters of information so students i believe you are very clear about what role communication plays if communication is in right method with no barriers and the stimulus response chain is effectively managed then probably half of the battle is won so managers use emails circulars notices memorandums internal magazines staff meetings maybe verbal announcements also to communicate necessary information to organizational members who are working across different departments we have now a case example of integrators that is license and consumer packaged goods companies so here in case of consumer packaged good companies managements may opt for creative marketing integrators here you see these integrators or licenses are from creative market field like brand managers category managers key account executives and geographic leaders so they play the role of integrators brand managers are people in coordinating role with specialized negotiating and networking skills they engage in assorted activities ranging from product development to consumer interactions so see students what all activities the brand manager has to carry out they make sure that all interrelated elements are brought together and right products reach to the right market at right time this is what is appropriate coordination besides these integrators companies can also opt for bridge function composed of employees drawn from marketing supply chain finance r&d etc so the members of bridge function will have diverse knowledge which is an advantage and expertise and generally the purpose behind formation of bridge function is to build relevant capabilities in critical business units and codify the best practices and incorporate them into formal processes and training programs so here we can see that the many organizations prefer organizational integrators for achieving required level of coordination coordination which can lead for better understanding and execution of managerial functions so students let us now see what are the steps in coordination process so there are broadly four types of coordination or four stages of coordination process first is understanding the current organizational policies procedures and plans which we have discussed that they serve as the effective tools for coordination so we have to understand what is their current status are they aligned with the organizational goal policy mission etc then second once they have once we have understood the plans and procedures we have to design and develop effective decision making system so that people know the steps in decision making process clearly and hence there is no clash in their point of views further it leads to installing of proper system of reporting of activities so reporting relationships need to be clearly defined which can play a vital role in having effective coordination and lastly forming committees to perform coordination related function in the organization so that these committees take over the major responsibility and as a result there is no possible conflict that occurs in the organization this is the bibliography students which i have referred to for preparing this session and if in case you want to know a little more about the concept of conflict and coordination you can dig into this information so students here we come to the end of this session 18 on conflict and coordination and we try to highlight what is conflict and types of conflict and how we can handle conflict well in organization along with that we have tried to have an insight in the concept of coordination types of coordination process of coordination and how we can have with the help of different techniques improve the coordination in organization 
This is all for session 18. Thank you.